Hello and welcome back to Max Runout. Uh, this is the third uh, of our series of videos on uh, injection molding plastic in the home shop. And uh, in this, uh, today we're going to talk about the electrical circuits uh, that uh, control the heaters for the injector and uh, how they're wired together and uh, the source of the components and so on. Uh, in the first part of the video, I'll uh, show you the components that I've used and uh, where I got them. And uh, in the, uh, and then we'll lay it out on the, uh, on my, I lay it out on my desk and I run a quick check and show how things are wired together and then uh, there's a brief uh, view of a circuit diagram uh, which you can pause your video and copy if you want and uh, then the uh, the last part of the video shows how I package the uh, uh, the circuitry in a housing and we discuss a few other things uh, related uh, subjects uh, so here we go Welcome back to the series on uh, experiments with uh, uh, injection molding plastics at home. Uh, this video we're going to focus on the uh, electrical uh, circuits required specifically for the uh, uh, injection molding cylinder and uh, the system to uh, keep the temperature or get the temperature the, to the right value. Uh, uh, for injecting the plastic. Uh, these are some components that I bought uh, uh, from eBay. Uh, the, uh, I was absolutely amazed at how inexpensive they were for what they do. Um, uh, the item in the center uh, is, a, uh, is the controller and it's a um, what they call a PID controller, proportional integral differential controller uh, that uh, uh, measures and and uh, the temp measures the temperature and then regulates the power uh, to the heaters uh, to keep the temperature right. Uh, the uh, uh, the controller uh, it, it's uh, remarkably easy to use. Uh, the uh, the temperature uh, of the uh, thing you're controlling is here. The set point temperature is there. There's some up and down buttons down there to set the temperature. There's really almost nothing to it. And um, included with the controller uh, that I ordered from eBay was, uh, um, yeah, on eBay was um, was this uh, uh, thermocouple. It's a K-type thermocouple. Uh, these terminals attach to the controller, uh, and this is a uh, this you can uh, attach to whatever it is you're trying to control. This has got a there's a thermocouple that's right in the end, and here is a. A sleeve with a uh, quarter twenty thread on it has a ten millimeter, uh, <clears throat> ten millimeter wrench uh, to tighten it, uh, and uh, but surprisingly, it's a it's a metric size wrench, but a uh, English size uh, threads. Uh, and this is a solid state relay. Uh, when the controller is calling for heat, it puts out a small DC voltage, which uh, you connect to this side of the solid state relay. And the other side of the solid state relay looks acts like a switch and it turns the power to the heaters on and off. <clears throat> so now this package, uh, the three items um, from on eBay was like $14. I couldn't believe uh, the price but uh, and I, I ended up ordering two uh, sets and uh, I've tried them out and they, they work just fine. Um, the other item here is uh, the actual heater. This is uh, uh, designed for heating uh, uh, molds, and uh, it, uh, uh, it it's a 165 watt heater, uh, and it uh, they <laughs> the price was five dollars. I bought four of them, and uh, there it, it has a 35 millimeter internal diameter, which I was able to, as I showed on an earlier video, I was able to make uh, uh, a cylinder to uh, machine it down to to fit that. And the whole works goes together uh, nicely and works really well. So uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, how I put the components together first in a in a test setup, and then how I package the uh, components to uh, make something that uh, would be useful in the uh, in the molding system. Um, okay, this is a test setup. 
uh, for my heater assembly. Uh, what you're looking at here is the uh, the uh, cylinder uh, injection cylinder turned upside down. I just got it sitting on a couple of two by fours, and the two of the heaters are installed, uh, but only one is wired up. Uh, you can see the wires coming out uh, towards the camera there that uh, provide power to the one heater. The uh, plug is is uh, screwed in the end and the thermocouple um, is in the back of the of the plug. Here's the controller. It's turned off right now. This is the solid state relay and uh, I have two uh, cords providing power. This orange one is providing power to the um, to the heater through the solid state relay and this brown cord here is uh, just providing operating power uh, to the uh, controller. Uh, the two leads from the thermocouple go into the controller right here and the um, output from the controller goes through these two wires and controls the solid state relay. I, um, you got to be careful with polarity on this one. Uh, there's a positive and a negative lead. Uh, but the, um, uh, I didn't have any red and black wire, so I just uh, color coded them with a, uh, with a Sharpie. Uh, this is all powered by an isolation transformer. Uh, this is a very good idea uh, if you're working with uh, um, AC power, uh, uh, you know, an open way like this. Uh, obviously, this is dangerous. You shouldn't do this unless you're familiar with uh, working with uh, uh, with high powered uh, or high voltage electricity. Uh, if you don't, if you're not, then you should find somebody to help you. But anyway, this comes off an isolation transformer, which makes it somewhat safer. But obviously, this is uh, there's open leads here, and so you can get electrocuted and the voltages are high enough to kill you, so you got to be really careful when you're doing this. Work with one hand in your pocket and so on. Follow the, the rules for uh, safe uh, operation of, uh, of electric circuits. Okay, the controller is now uh, turned on, and uh, you can see the displays there. The top one uh, indicates the temperature of the uh, thermocouple uh, at the present time and the bottom one uh, is uh, the set temperature. Uh, this particular unit is set up to uh, operate in uh, degrees centigrade and uh, uh, even though uh, uh, I'm, I'm normally a Fahrenheit person but uh, I'm used to this uh, uh, now and uh, I've just left it alone. It, it's possible to change the setting so it reads in Fahrenheit, but uh, uh, this is fine. Uh, 100 degrees C, of course, is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to bring it up to the boiling point of water and you can see that the temperature of the uh, unit is starting to rise already. The thermocouple is right near where the spout is going to be, where the plastic is going to come out. So that's the point where we want to control the temperature uh, as best as possible. Uh, the um, uh, This is the solid state relay and uh, I've got a little uh, voltmeter here. I'm going to show you what uh, what's going on there. Uh, when the uh, uh, the uh, controller is calling for heat which it is now, uh, there's a, a green light that goes on on the controller. You can see that on the left side of the controller. And there's also a little orange light that turns on in the solid state relay. You can't see that right now. But I'm going to take the voltmeter here and uh, probe the terminals of the, uh, the solid state uh, relay so you can see what's happening. Okay, with the meter set for DC voltage, I'm going to look at the uh, voltage across the input side of the uh, solid state relay and it's uh, just over 9 volts DC. 
So the uh, controller actually outputs the 9 volt DC to the solid state relay, which causes it to turn on. The spec here on it says it will turn on with anywhere from 3 to 32 volts. And uh, if I now go to AC and look at the uh, output terminals of the relay, um, we're uh, at the moment it's not calling for heat. Uh, it's off at the moment, even though it's only reached 85 degrees C. It has a proportional control algorithm that uh, causes it to cycle on and off. And so we got the whole uh, 117 volts or so of our uh, AC uh, circuit in the shop here uh, is across the uh, thing. Now it's calling for heat. The green light is on. And um, the voltage across the solid state relay is only one volt. So all the voltage is now across the heater. And uh, if I look at the heater, I'll see that uh, all the voltage is across the heater. And uh, now it's off again so that uh, uh, all the voltage is across the relay. And you can see the temperature still climbing and it's approaching the uh, uh, set point. Um, let's take a look at the DC side again. It is not, yeah, it is calling for heat now. And, uh, oh, that's AC. Wait a minute. Setting the meter for DC. Um, it's calling for heat now, and there's 9 volts across it, and when it cycles off, which it should do in just a second here, yes, now it's off and there's only, you know, 100 millivolts there. So, uh, uh, so it's, the controller is operating correctly and it's controlling the solid state relay and the heater, it's pretty warm. Um, 98 degrees C, so it's just about uh, boiling temperature of water. And uh, as it uh, runs here, it should stabilize uh, at right around 99 or 100 degrees centigrade. So the controller is working right, it's working correctly, and uh, uh, we're going to get uh, shortly here, we're going to get ready to uh, put it into the uh, uh, it's a uh, final resting place here. I'll, I'll wire up the other um, uh, heater and uh, I think we'll go with just two to start with, see how that works. And uh, we'll put it in the uh, in the uh, arbor press and get ready to uh, uh, load it up with some plastic and, uh, and give it a try. Uh, so that that's it for now. We'll be back uh, shortly when we got uh, uh, some testing, uh, some ability to uh, test it in in place. Okay, here's the electrical wiring uh, after uh, repackaging. I uh, this is the same basic circuit that I showed you earlier. Uh, laid out on my desk, but now uh, it's uh, it's been uh, packaged. I, uh, in keeping with the uh, uh, the idea of using what I had, uh, I uh, had a scrap of uh, quarter inch aluminum, uh, and that became the basic uh, chassis for it, the main support. Uh, these uh, two uh, front and back uh, covers are a piece of an aluminum channel that. Uh, uh, came from a neighbor's uh, hot tub cover. I helped him replace and uh, I grabbed the uh, about 10 feet of this aluminum channel um, before it went to the scrap yard and that's been handy for lots of projects. Uh, I added an on off switch um, and uh, on the uh, the back side I added a fuse uh, and here's where the AC cord comes in. Um, this is the same solid state relay that we showed you before. Um, the, um, the heater leads will come in through this, through this grommet here and go right to this terminal strip. And uh, the thermocouple leads will come in through this grommet and go under this wire clamp here and attach right here uh, to the back of the uh, controller. Uh, so I believe it's all set to go, um, and uh, 
Oh, there's a cover I made for it also. This is uh, <coughs> covers made out of uh, 040 aluminum. Uh, another scrap that I had laying around and uh, left over from another project. And that goes right over the top here. And uh, that'll uh, keep my fingers out of it while I'm uh, uh, hopefully uh, injection molding some uh, plastics. Um, next, uh, we'll be mounting this on the uh, Arbor Press uh, uh, cart and uh, getting ready to uh, hook up the, uh, the power to the main heaters. Uh, by the way, the heaters, a uh, couple things about that. Um, the uh, the uh, Um, the heaters had a kind of an oddball uh, wire coming out of them. Um, the uh, I've, I've uh, mounted a couple terminals on there, but uh, this is a uh, this is the, the wires from the other one, which I haven't put terminals on yet. Uh, and they have uh, kind of a uh, odd looking. Uh, um, there it is. Odd-looking wires. They're flat, uh, and they—I uh, think they're probably nichrome uh, or something, but, but they're certainly not anything familiar. And uh, the uh, uh, what I did was I folded them uh, three ways over. I uh, bent them over and then bent them over again, and uh, put them in a uh, uh, a crimp. Uh, a crimp terminal, uh, which is uh, one of the ones that are uh, with the blue. Uh, I, I had some insulated terminals, uh, the one with the blue insulation, which I think is designed for uh, number 16 wire or so. And uh, I pulled the uh, blue insulation off and then just crimped it on the folded over, uh, I believe they're nichrome wires, and uh, that worked fine. Uh, so uh, they don't get hot, so they must be. Uh, they must have a lower resistance um, uh, than the uh, than the uh, wires in the heaters, uh, but um, they do have a, a uh, uh, they are made out of some strange metal. I don't know what it is. Uh, oh, and the other thing um, I wanted to mention about this uh, the thermocouple <coughs> where it screws into the uh, here where it screws into the the uh, um, cap that I made. Um, I, I drilled a blind hole in there and tapped it quarter 20, which is uh, what the uh, thermocouple uh, threads were. Uh, but um, uh, even with a bottoming tap, you can't get all the way down to the bottom. And uh, when I uh, screwed it in, the, the cable was a little loose. And I made the mistake of trying to tighten it up a little more with a wrench. And it turns out that, that this is made of some very, very soft stuff, and I just twisted it right off. Um, I had to uh, 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 dig it out, of, or I had to actually drill it out of there. I had to cut the thermocouple wires and drill it out of there, and so I ruined the thermocouple. So be very careful with that. If you, if you do this, uh, be careful about not uh, tightening that too much at all. So, okay, next time we'll uh, we'll show it uh, on the. Uh, Installed on the uh, on the Arbor Press cart. <laughs>